everyone, it's Emily Graziano here today, and I'm going to be doing a book review, a royal book review, on a new biography about Queen Elizabeth, simply titled The Queen by Matthew Dennison. Matthew Dennison is a distinguished royal author who has done some um, royal biographies in the past, and this is his latest book, subject Queen Elizabeth II. And um, the book is already out in the UK, I believe, but it comes out in the US on September 1st, 2021, and I will link some links in the description below, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Goodreads, authors page, stuff like that. And um, before I go any further, I'd like to thank Haley and the team at K Publicity and at Head of Zeus Publishing for giving me the chance to read and review this book. It was a cool read, it was fascinating, and I'm sure, as I will point out in my review, it was just really, really awesome. So, one of the first things that I'd like to point out in this book is that it's distinguishable because it is one of the first books about Queen Elizabeth published after the death of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Okay, Prince Philip sadly passed away on April 9th, earlier this year in 2021, at the age of 99. He was roughly, almost exactly, two months from his 100th birthday. So this book is one of the first that gives a complete retrospect at Philip and Elizabeth's relationship in its entirety. And that was very, very cool because it's going to be the first of its kind. You know, every book you read that was published prior to this one looks at it at the current status that it is now, I'm sorry, it looks at it at the status that it was when Philip was alive rather than it is now. So this book really allows you to grasp their relationship and really look at it from its beginnings, you know, when they were just teenagers, Elizabeth was 13, Philip was five years older, and then all the way into their 90s. That is just an incredible amount of time to know somebody. And yes, during their relationship, there were hardships. But when you are married to someone for over 70 years, I'd venture to say, I mean, I'm not married myself, but there's going to be hardships. There's going to be bumps in the road that you're going to have to navigate. And it's not so much the focus on the rumors and the nasty things that may have happened in the, 19, the late 1950s. It's really what I took away from reading about that was how they were able to get past that, how they were able to grow and change as people and keep their marriage together. Um, that, that in itself was really, really cool. Um, one of the second things that I'd like to point out about this book is so many times, far too often, you will read a book about a subject and they will just deviate on the people surrounding them. Like in this book, it would be way too easy to deviate like pages upon pages, paragraphs upon paragraphs to people such as Princess Margaret or the Queen Mother, her mother, the Queen Mother, or to Martin Chaderless, or, um, who was her private secretary for a very, very long time from her ascension until 1977, so that's 25 years, roughly. Um, it would be way too easy to dedicate those pages to politicians and family members and royal staff and just go on a tangent about those people. But this book does not do that. It gives you a need-to-know background basis about the people surrounding Elizabeth and um, her reign, but it does not go off focus from Queen Elizabeth herself. It's very, very focused and centered on Elizabeth. Therefore, it gives it a really strong flow. And it, at the same time, will give you some context of who this person is in regards to her reign. Personally, for me, um, the best part about that was learning a lot about the prime ministers who were in parliament. Because um, as much as I know about the British royal family, because um, I've been a collector of British royal memorabilia, like books, souvenirs, um, just stuff like that. I've been a collector since I've been 14. And as much as I know about the royal family, I really do not know that much about politicians and prime ministers. So that for me was very helpful. Because if you said, oh, yeah, um, um, 
you know, Margaret Thatcher. Okay, what I know from her is basically about the crown and the Iron Lady, but like her, other than that, I'm not really familiar with her, other than the fact, you know, she's the first female prime minister, but like people like that, it's like, okay, give me the name, give me a little bit of the background, I'm good. So that was very helpful to me personally. Um, I'd also like to point out that this book, I, I think any part of any biography about anybody, the most interesting part is their childhood, because that's really what we as people know least about. We weren't there. Often of times childhood of somebody who is in the public eye is the least documented part of their life, but this book gives a really fascinating in-depth look at her childhood. Queen Elizabeth, much like Queen Victoria, I feel in the modern day is looked at as the old lady queen. Oh, she's the old lady. But I think it's important, vital to remember that at one point Queen Elizabeth was this young, vibrant woman whose childhood was un uh, very, very happy until the 1936 abdication. She was a princess trendsetter, kind of like how Princess Charlotte is in the public eye today as fascination with her, like, oh, what is Princess Charlotte wearing? What are her favorite toys? Um, what hobbies does she like to do? Kind of like that. That was what Queen Elizabeth was doing in the 1920s uh, and early 30s. Um, her and Princess Margaret, I would say, like, oh, the princesses, they like this German dollhouse that their grandmother g gave them. And Princess Elizabeth often wears yellow a lot of the time, so she was a very much a trendsetter. Um, before her childhood nickname Lilibet came about, of course given to her by her family, uh, the name Baby Betty, that was what the, um, the Australian press dubbed her as. So um, to know that she like started the name, she brought the name Betty like back into the public interest before Lilibet, it was brief, but it was there. That was just really fascinating to read. You know, she had a family unit, a close family unit of we four, consisting of her parents and her sister. And they were a very tight-knit group, considering that Elizabeth was not in immediate line for the throne. She was almost minor royalty because she was the oldest child of the second son, of course. So her father, of course, we know is George VI, but he was known as Bertie. Um, his brother David, Edward VIII, you know, the abdicator, he was the first son of George V, and um, until his abdication, Elizabeth was not accept, ex expected, sorry, expected to be queen. So, at the time of her birth, she was kind of like maybe, who's like minor royalty now? Okay, like maybe the York girls, princesses Eugenie and Beatrice. People are interested in them. But they don't draw the same attention as, say, Meghan or Kate, if you get what I'm saying. Um, so to know that she had this really happy childhood and everything started changing for her around 1936 because you had the abdication, then shortly after that you had World War II. And, you know, she came out of that, Elizabeth came out of that, a young woman who almost immediately after got married to Prince Philip at a time when it wasn't, he was not a popular choice because Philip had a lot of German connections. All his sisters married former Nazi officers. So that transitional period of her childhood to be, like coming out of childhood into being a young adult and then being married in, in 19, oh, sorry, 1947, that, that was just, fascinating that that was such a quick transition. It was just fascinating. Um, so I, that part of her life was just a great read and it really made me brush up on all my facts because you know how sometimes you think you know something and then you read it and it just reaffirms everything. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, I also wanted to delve into some of the criticisms of maybe Queen Elizabeth's reign that were mentioned in this book. And I'm happy, delighted to report that this book is very nuanced. Rather than taking a side, it really gives you the facts and lets you judge for yourself your own opinion on certain issues like the Aberfan disaster of 1966, um, Princess Diana's death, the conflict of 
Elizabeth's role in the Princess Margaret and P group Captain Peter Townsend marriage. It covers, those are just a few because unfortunately um, when you live for that long and you're on the throne for that long, you're going to witness both events good and unfortunately bad. You're, it's just inevitable that there's going to be conflict. So it really gives you a lot of facts and it lays it out and you're like, okay, here's the facts. What do you think of it? Like, it, it kind of prompts you to think about it yourself, which I, that's always the best type of read, I think, when you're dealing with, um, you know, tricky, touchy s situations like that. So the one thing I will say is I was not so much a fan of how the author kept referring to any move by Princess Diana in, like, the mid-late 90s as revenge. I don't know, maybe that's just rubbed me the wrong way, personally. But... I, I just didn't care for that wording of the whole situation. I, that was the only, that's the only criticism I think I have about the book. Anyway, it was just all well done other than that, I think, allowing you to form your own judgment. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and the takeaway from this book, really for me, is how much the Queen endures. She has been quote Claire Foy in her 2017 Golden Globes acceptance speech. She's She played Queen Elizabeth in the first two seasons of The Crown. She has been at the center of the world since her ascension to the throne in 1952. She has just been there. She has met world leaders from Winston Churchill and Mrs. Roosevelt to you know, meeting Bi President Biden and um, everybody in between, Ev and I mean everybody, Nelson Mandela, um, JFK, um, just everybody you could think of She from the 50s till now, she has met. And that, who can say that? I mean, I can't say that. You probably can't say that. It's just incredible. And she's endured hardships, scandals, um, premature death. It, she's just been at the center of all of that. And she has navigated those situations beautifully. I don't think I could do any better. And it's just incredible. It, it just reminds, reading this book just reminds me of how remarkable of a woman and of a human being she is. And yeah, She's not perfect, but who is? If you reign for that long, you'd have to endure hardships and situations like that, too. And that was the, just the beautiful part of it, is that the queen, she's human, but yet she has this incredible world presence. And she has done a remarkable job at being in the center of it all. And I'm very, very thankful that I got to read this book, and it just reaffirmed my admiration and respect for Her Majesty the Queen. I'm really, really thankful. And I, I hope that um, you watching this video, you can get a sense of how much I respect the Queen and maybe um, I've prompted you to even read the book. So that was really, really great. I thank everybody who allowed me to read this and review this and for YouTube and everything. Um, and I have other books that um, Maybe in the future I could do um, more royal, r royal reviews of um, royal of royal biographies. So I thank you for watching this video. I'm Emily Graziano. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.